Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a build guide and a tutorial on the best Demon Hunter build for Diablo 3 going into Season 22. With that fourth Kanai's Cube slot, there is a lot more to go ahead and actually utilize with this build. There's lots of different builds to go ahead and play, but they are multiple ways to go ahead and play this that would still be considered the best. It just kind of depends if you want to do speed farming or if you happen to roll certain items earlier on, you can go ahead and use some of these. But uh, this is going to be more of a a generic uh, build guide uh, first off and then we'll go into more of the uh, niche things that you guys can go ahead and run as well. So first off let's go ahead and explain how the build works. So we are going to be using the Gears of Dreadland set. This is the same set that was the best but now with season 22 with the extra Kanai's cube slot we do happen to have a few room for different uh, build variations here. So first off I'm going to go ahead and briefly explain the build and the gameplay as well as how you're going to use your skills and then then I'll go ahead and go over every single piece of gear and what you want to go ahead and try to roll on it. So starting off, um, we are using the Gears of Dreadland set, so it's a uh, two-piece bonus mix, so we're going to be gaining these stacks of momentum. You'll see in the bottom left, uh, above my W and E keybind, uh, you'll see that the are these little icons. One of them that we're looking at is the little foot with the wings next to it where it's going uh, and it, it kind of varies. It's usually going to be at 20 and then I'll dip down to like 17 then I'll reactivate the uh, hungering arrow. Basically that's the two piece bonus. We want to try to keep that at pretty much 20 at, uh, as much as we can but if it dips down we'll dip, let it dip down to like 17 and then we go ahead and reactivate it. That's going to give us the most min maxing because how it works is with the two piece bonus we're going to be able to go ahead and get increased damage per stack of the uh, momentum over there. And in terms of gearing, this is going to be the uh, seasonal free Hadrix gift set. So uh, another question that I might, uh, you know, go ahead and add to this video really quick that I have often asked, how do you go ahead and get these uh, set items? Just go ahead and farm the greater rifts or rifts. That's the easiest way to go ahead and get these. But because it's Hadrix gift this season, just go ahead and complete your season journey and you'll have all six pieces ASAP. Um, and then with a four piece bonus, um, when you strafe against enemies, it'll automatically shoot the last primary skill. In our case, it's going to be Hungering Arrow. And then we're gonna get 60% damage reduction while strafing and for five seconds after. And then we get increased movement speed for each second of momentum. So all those stacks are gonna give us extra movement speed as well. And then with the six piece bonus, just massive increased damage to our primary skills. So uh, how the uh, gameplay works is we are gonna be strafing pretty much the entire time. We're gonna be using a uh, hungering arrow to build up those stacks. And then we are gonna be just zooming by and strafing will automatically cast those hungering arrows for us. And then in terms of the other skills, Vengeance, keep that up all, at all times. We're just gonna go ahead and get some extra damage reduction as well as bonus damage uh, with that ability. And then preparation, just activate this as soon as it's up pretty much at all times. It just grants us the ability to go and spam on our smoke screen a little bit more often. We are running special recipe over here, so it's gonna reduce the uh, uh, resource cost of it. You can also run the displacement. Uh, it just lets you kind of go a little bit faster in case you wanna move and get away from a target a little bit faster, but most people will probably like special recipe uh, the most. And then we have Fan of Knives Bladed Armor. This is just gonna give us additional armor, so just activate this at all times because it runs off of a cooldown. It doesn't use any resource. And then for our passives, we are running Coal of the Week, we're running Ambush, uh, Numbing Traps, and Awareness. Now there are some variations and I'll go ahead and get into that in a second for the passives. Um, so if you want to, you can uh, also play with Archery and you can also play with the Perfectionist. It kind of depends on what you need, if you need more survivability or whatnot, but for most people, I'm just gonna go ahead and recommend uh, those two. But again, uh, you can feel free to go ahead and swap in between those two or even single out if you're really trying to uh, eliminate that Rift Guardian and they're just taking too long. This can also be another option, but uh, for most people, I would say they will probably uh, really like the Call of the Week and uh, ambush are great as well, just to get some extra damage in as quickly as possible. In terms of the uh, cube slot, now you can equip some of these and I'll get into the Vala's Bequest two-handed um, or the two uh, dual wielding uh, crossbows versus running the uh, Dawn and then just the Ninth Series Satchel in a moment here. But basically you can swap any of these in and out. You can also run Fortress Ballista, which will give you extra survivability but pretty much most builds will run Dawn. Vala's Bequest is technically optional. You can go ahead and whatever one rolls better, uh, you can go ahead and equip that one instead. But uh, 
Night Series Satchel is going to give us extra damage with Hungry Arrow, and it's also guaranteed to pierce, and it does a massive amount of extra bonus damage with that. And then uh, we have Depth Diggers. This is going to go ahead and grant us the ability to... So primary skills will go ahead and uh, deal massive amount of damage. And since all of our damage is from Hungering Arrow, we're going to benefit off of that greatly. And then we can go ahead and play with a lot of different things. We can use Convention of Elements here uh, for a ring slot, or we can go ahead and use the Elusive Ring. Either one of these is viable. Um, this one is great for pushing if you want to min-max on damage. Uh, there are people using S of Johan as well in the cube slot, and I'll get into... There are other variations, but I would say this is on average what most people will go ahead and actually put in uh, because you have to have your ring slots available for the focus and restraint. But that's going to be it for the uh, skills, passives, and what we have in the cube. But again, we can put other ones in the cube if we want to. Uh, but first off, let's go and start off with the helm and what we want to go ahead and get for rolls. So for the helmet, we're looking for... Uh, dexterity, vitality, and then crit hit chance. And then when you see the thing that says Caldician's Despair, don't worry about that. That's when you go ahead and augment your gear. And the gameplay you guys are seeing, we are speed throughing most of the content here and we don't even have any augments. It's just because this build is very strong. Pretty much diamonds in every single piece of our gear to get that extra resistance. But in the helm, it's gonna grant us cooldown reduction so we can upkeep our vengeance up as much as possible. And so next up with the shoulders, the only important thing with the shoulders, besides most of the pieces of gear, just like in most builds in Diablo, you want crit hit chance, crit hit damage, and then this heavily benefits from area damage with the Hungering Arrow because it's gonna pierce and do massive amounts of damage with the Cold Rune uh, that uh, will go ahead and do 70% more damage every consecutive pierce. So with the area damage uh, on our shoulders and cooldown, that's what we're really looking forward to. If you don't get the uh, resistances and get vitality, it's totally fine. But the most important thing is cooldown and the area damage on the shoulders. And then for the chest piece over here, uh, nothing too particular that's on the primary roll. You can actually get a lot of benefit off of the secondary rolls, which is getting that reduction on damage from ranged or melee attacks. Ideally you get both, but it's very difficult to get that. Now, as far as the amulet goes, you can run the S of Johan or the Flavor of Time. Uh, what you're really looking for is that cold damage percent increase. Crit chance, crit damage. You can even get cooldown reduction if you get one of those instead. That's totally fine too. And then uh, for the Bracers, Wraps of Clarity, since we will be using that Hungering Arrow, that's going to go ahead and act as our vessel for the secondary, which is going to go ahead and get ourselves some extra damage reduction. Um, when we go ahead and use Hungry Arrow. And then we have Hunter's Wrath. Uh, one thing important to roll on this is getting that primary increases Hungering Arrow damage because that's what we're going to be using for all of our damage. And then um, most importantly, the secondary where it's the primary skills attack 30% faster and deal 200% increased damage. Uh, that is what we're really using this for. And then we have Focus and Restraint. Uh, ideally, Crit hit chance, crit hit damage, and area damage, or just regular damage. In the very beginning, you can go ahead and have main stat. It's totally fine. This is more so when you're min-maxing with your paragons over here, but uh, that's ideally what you're looking for on both restraint and focus over here. And then with the pants, uh, other important thing to go ahead and have is that increased hungering arrow damage. The rest of the stats don't really matter too much, but that's ideally what you get. Now, when you go ahead and dual wield one-handed weapons, getting the flat like 10% damage is totally fine. If you are dual wielding, you can actually roll that off because it will swap in between them um, and just get things like cooldown reduction or area damage. That would actually be more ideal. Um, and then for our other one, I'm running Dawn for that uh, reduction of cooldown of vengeance because it's very important to go ahead and have a huge amount of damage reduction and increased damage. So this one, Dawn, you're gonna have to either cube or have it equipped. That's kind of uh, for every single build. Vala's Bequest is optional. The reason why I say it's optional, and you can go ahead and run the ninth series satchel, it depends on your rolls because getting this to roll is kind of difficult because it rolls anywhere from 450% to 600% increased damage, which is a huge variation here. So a lot of people will probably opt to cube, especially in, in the very beginning. However, Valus Bequest can be argued that it is viable for like min-maxing. The reason why is because it offers strafe projectiles pierce. Now, it's not gonna deal more damage because it's going to be piercing more because you already happen to have the ninth series satchel where it's guaranteed to pierce anyways the reason why it's so good is there's a, a break point where you're going to be able to go ahead and have more of the hungering arrows fire and what that allows you to do basically with the four piece uh, bonus where the strafe automatically fires the hungering arrow it'll just fire up more often and in a better area 
um, basically it targets things a little bit better. So for min-maxing, this can be very strong as well. I'm actually gonna link a video by Wudijo because he explains it. It's a really long thing and it goes into like breakpoints and stuff, but for the most part, it just really helps out getting more arrows at the end of the day. And it actually is really, really good, especially if you don't really wanna pay attention to uh, certain positionings, it's just great for that. But you don't have to run this. This is technically optional, but it's in a lot of different builds uh, over there. But uh, now that we've gone over the items and what you kind of are looking forward to on most of your pieces of gear, let's go ahead and hop right into the gems here. So um, in terms of the gems, uh, you're definitely gonna want Taegook. That's gonna go ahead and just build up as you go ahead and see uh, in the gameplay here, that uh, stack that's at 10 and it has a little like Taegook icon. It's pretty easy to keep up. You just go ahead and strafe and it really won't go away at all. And then we're gonna be also running the Bane of the Stricken. Now this one's kind of optional, depending on if you're doing speed runs or not, but if you're doing greater rift pushings, you have to have this. It's basically required. However, because of the new seasonal uh, change with the pylons and getting those clones, some people are trying to go ahead and push without it and you can go ahead and run Bane of the Trapped as that significantly increases your speed in clearing out most of the content before the uh, Rift Guardian. So I will say that this one's kind of optional here and this one is absolutely not optional. This is Simplicity Strength. It just increases the amount of damage that you deal uh, with your primary skills, AKA your Hungering Arrow. It also has the ability to go ahead and heal yourself up, uh, which is quite nice. On the Bracers, um, Obviously you want to go ahead and have cold uh, damage on these and then also your crit hit chance on these because I didn't, I don't think I went over it, the exact uh, ones on the uh, rolls on the bracers, but those are the only important things to go ahead and mention with the build. Now, because of this new seasonal change, I want to go ahead and introduce you guys to other ways that you can play this as uh, with that fourth Knight's Cube slot, there's a lot of uh, variations and I want to give you guys some other variations in case any of you guys are kind of lazy like myself because Technically, with Fan of Knives Bladed Armor, it is something that gives you a little bit more min-maxing with the 40% armor. You can indeed run other things, uh, like if you want to go ahead and run the Boar Pet, that actually gives you a bunch of extra survivability, but it's a little bit less um, of a number when it comes down to min-maxing, but you don't have to activate it, and that will be one upside, because sometimes that one millisecond where it's not up, you can go ahead and actually just die simply because of it. Now, I wanna go ahead and show you guys some other, uh, again, variations of equipment uh, with the build. So, I mentioned before, you can run S of Johan, or you can run the Flavor of Time. Uh, both are very strong. The reason why S of Johan is very strong, especially on any Rift Guardian that would spawn things, if you pull all the enemies in, you hit that massive area damage because of all the Hungering Arrow pierces, it's actually really huge, um, but that's kind of RNG on that. But in terms of the amulet, you can also run Squirt's Necklace. That is another option, but I recommend you guys to run Fortress Ballista if you want to go ahead and do that as well. Now, you can also use the Captain Crimson set. You'd obviously run two pieces of it with a Royal Ring of Grandeur. That's going to give you some damage reduction and increased damage. And on top of that, it's actually really good with Ying's Recurve. This is a build that some people are experimenting with as well, where you're going to be able to go ahead and benefit off of that primary, where it reduces all resource costs by up to 55%. So massive amount of survivability. You can completely drop the elusive ring to go ahead and have a huge amount of extra potential damage and lets you basically spam smoke screen forever, which is quite nice. Um, now I mentioned before, you can go ahead and equip the Night Series Satchel as well. You can also happen to use Dawn. There's a lot of variations here, but in terms of the uh, other builds, uh, this is Odyssey's End. It normally didn't see too much play. It's by the way, very, very difficult to build, but if we're talking about min-maxing, especially against the Rift Guardian, this thing is actually fantastic. Uh, so what it does is it makes it so if an enemy is hit by entangling shot, they will take 100 to 150% increased damage from all sources. So that's a huge extra amount of damage that you'll be benefiting from. Uh, but you do have to go ahead and swap into this, cast it, and then reactivate Hungering Arrow so it spams Hungering Arrow. It's really not easy to play it. I don't recommend it for most players. There's also uh, the Royal Ring of Grandeur. Also, you can go ahead and use that uh, with all guilds, which is another way to play the build. You can also use Hexing Pants uh, or the Mantle of Channeling. There's another options that you guys can go ahead 
and put inside of the cube. I just wanted to go ahead and mention those because there are a lot of different ways that you can play this build. And especially if you're just starting off in the season and you know, you're just picking some stuff up. Those are excellent things to go ahead and put in your cube, maybe before you get some of the other items that I mentioned before. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of room for play if you want to go ahead and try out other things. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up the uh, entirety of the build as well as showing you guys the gameplay of it. But if you guys have any questions on the build, uh, definitely let me know down below in the comment section below. And I will also provide the Max Roll GG D3 planner. So if you guys just want to go ahead and go visit the website, maybe I was too fast on anything, feel free to go ahead and visit that as it will be in the pinned comment section below. But anyways, guys, good luck in season 22 with your Demon Hunters. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you are new here and want to see more Diablo and other action RPG content, hit subscribe, turn that bell, and you'll definitely see more. But take care, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video. And I'm signing out. Peace.